Are you tired of going to the doctor with the same issue over and over again and never getting any relief? Are you tired of buying all types of vitamins and supplements, hoping but not knowing for sure that they will keep you healthy? Or are you getting enough of the right kind of nutrients that your specific body needs? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you need a nutritional blood analysis. With a nutritional blood analysis, we can take one drop of blood from a prick of your finger and analyze your body's nutritional needs, nutritional deficiencies, and nutritional imbalances. This analysis can provide an early warning of possible future health challenges so you can make the changes now to avoid the negative outcome. A nutritional blood analysis can be used to monitor a health challenge before and after adopting an approach to restore health and balance. It will also allow you the ability to determine the effectiveness of various approaches to restoring and balancing your health. So don't wait. Make your appointment. Stop guessing with your health. Know what works for sure. 901-602-7063. The Graphics Printing, located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, a complete print shop for all your printing needs. They do it all. Color copy, resumes, funeral programs, rubber stamps, full color business cards, wedding and graduation invitations, and more. 30 plus years of quality work and service. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, Tennessee, 901-345-9294. C-Graphics Printing. CJU's Appliances, located at 3530 Jackson Avenue here in Memphis, Tennessee. Call them at 901-487-7882. CJU's Appliances have the best prices in town. Sales and service, heating and air. Also the best appliances you'll find anywhere in the Mid-South. Refrigerators, uh, microwaves, stoves, washers and dryers, deep freezers, dishwashers, whatever you need in used appliances. And folks, I'm telling you, they're the best used appliances anywhere you'll find. That's CJ Used Appliances, 3530 Jackson Avenue. All appliances come with warranty. You can call them at 901-487-7882. Again, 901-487-7882. CJ Used Appliances. CNS Motors Auto Sales, located at 2508 Summer Avenue here in Memphis, Tennessee. Call them at 901 323 8778. CNS Motors Auto Sales has been around since 1984. Go by and see Chris today for some of the best pre owned and used vehicles in the city. They have SUVs, minivans, cars, trucks, whatever you're looking for in pre owned used vehicles. Hey, you can find it right there at CNS Motors Auto Sales. See Chris since 1984. They will treat you right. Call them at 901-323-8778. That's 901-323-8778. 2508 Summer Avenue, CNS Motors Auto Sales. This is Sergeant Chris Richardson with the Tennessee Highway Patrol here to explain the Tennessee Hands-Free Law, which is a new state law effective July 1st, 2019. In Public Chapter 412, it makes it illegal for a driver to hold a cell phone or a mobile device with any part of their body, to write, send, or read any text-based communication, to reach for a cell phone or mobile device in a manner that requires the driver to no longer be in a seated driving position or properly restrained by a seatbelt to watch a video or a movie on a cell phone or a mobile device, and to record or broadcast video on a cell phone or a mobile device. So, can I still talk on my cell phone while driving? Yes. A driver is permitted to use an earpiece, headphone device, or a device worn on a wrist to conduct a voice-based communication. The driver may use one button on a cell phone or a mobile device to initiate or terminate voice communication, and voice-based communication may also be used to send a text message. Learn more at handsfreetn.com. Are you tired of going to the doctor with the same issue over and over again and never getting any relief? Are you tired of buying all types of vitamins and supplements? 
hoping but not knowing for sure that they will keep you healthy? Or are you getting enough of the right kind of nutrients that your specific body needs? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you need a nutritional blood analysis. With a nutritional blood analysis, we can take one drop of blood from a prick of your finger and analyze your body's nutritional needs, nutritional deficiencies, and nutritional imbalances. This analysis can provide an early warning of possible future health challenges so you can make the changes now to avoid the negative outcome. A nutritional blood analysis can be used to monitor a health challenge before and after adopting an approach to restore health and balance. It will also allow you the ability to determine the effectiveness of various approaches to restoring and balancing your health. So don't wait. Make your appointment. Stop guessing with your health. Know what works for sure. 901-602-7063. The Graphics Printing, located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, a complete print shop for all your printing needs. They do it all. Color copy, resumes, funeral programs, rubber stamps, full color business cards, wedding and graduation invitations, and more. 30 plus years of quality work and service. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, Tennessee, 901-345-9294. See graphics printing. CJ Used Appliances, located at 3530 Jackson Avenue here in Memphis, Tennessee. Call them at 901-487-7882. CJ Used Appliances have the best prices in town. Sales and service, heating and air. Also the best appliances you'll find anywhere in the Mid-South. Refrigerators, uh, microwaves, stoves, washers and dryers, deep freezers, dishwashers, whatever you need in used appliances. And folks, I'm telling you, they're the best used appliances anywhere you'll find. That's CJ Used Appliances, 3530 Jackson Avenue. All appliances come with warranty. You can call them at 901-487-7882. Again, 901-487-7882. CJ Used Appliances.
you may be listening, whether that's on the Spreaker app, whether that is Facebook Live, where you can see my face and interact with me that way, whether that's any other way in the social media realm or the, the realms of anywhere else, even after the show's over, if you're listening on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, all those things, I'd appreciate you for downloading and tuning in to the show. It's a Wednesday. It's 2.10 p.m. in the city of Memphis. And it's other times everywhere else. Um, but again, man, I appreciate y'all for tuning in and for listening, for watching and all that stuff. A lot of stuff to get to on today. Got a special guest coming up um, at around 2.40. Got my man Leon Taylor joining me at 2.40. Uh, Going to talk some things. We'll talk about what on this past weekend. Uh, what we wanted to talk about the other day uh, was the big Lorenzen Wright rendezvous friend that they had this past weekend that involved a lot of local celebrities and involved a lot of local people, uh, local and national, really, coming into town and uh, celebrating basketball at the University of Memphis, Elmer Field Fieldhouse, things of that nature. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, talking about that, also getting his thoughts on what I'm about to talk about here off the top, and that is Memphis Tigers basketball. And the reason we're talking about that is because practice tipped off yesterday. Practice tipped off yesterday uh, at the uh, Tigers basketball facility, the Lori Walton uh Family center, what they call it over there. Um, but there was a lot of money put in that thing. And, uh, it's, it's a brand new, spanking new facility, man. And the Tigers ready to tip it off, man. Uh, of course, they've been working there all summer. Um, you know, throughout the summer doing things, training, lifting weights, all of that good stuff. But now it's the time to really get it in, to start getting it going, to get prepared. For the upcoming basketball season at FedEx Forum, man. So I'm very much looking forward to what is uh, to come this season. You know, when you talk about this season, this is probably, uh, as we've, we've talked about many times, the most anticipated Tiger basketball season in the history of the school. Um, you know, there's been a lot of anticipated seasons. You know, you go back to... The Derrick Rose years uh, with John Calipari and that class that they had coming in. And you talk about uh, Josh Pashner actually had a really anticipated season, his second season as coach of the Tigers. His second season was extremely uh, anticipated because of the class he had coming in with Joe Jackson and Chris Crawford and all those boys coming in. Uh, Tarrant Black, uh, so many other guys that were in that class. Um, one of the top classes, if not the number one class in the country at that point. Uh, even the Will Barton class later on was very highly anticipated, but I don't think it could even touch what's coming right now. Because not only do you have guys that are, you know, uh, top recruits in the country, but you also have guys that are considered, uh, top draft picks, you know, uh, you go back to Derrick Rose if you want to compare to that season. Derrick Rose was expected to be a top pick in the draft, and he did end up becoming the number one pick in the draft after his freshman season at Memphis. And uh, you know all that went on after that. But uh, Memphis holds the mark of having him. And now, this year, James Wiseman is projected by a lot of projections to be the number one pick in this upcoming NBA draft after his uh, one season coming up in college. Most expect him to be a one-and-done. We would be shocked if he's not. Uh, it would almost take something bad to happen for him to not be the number one pick or for somebody else to emerge uh, that we're not expecting as of right now. So you got that going on. You got the excitement about Precious Achua. Coming in, uh, Precious is a guy that's projected to be a lottery pick. Uh, some have him in the top 10. Some have him in the top 20. But either way, most have him in the first round. 
in that first half of the first round, not later on or not toward the back or not, uh, you know, barely pulling up the rear, as some like to say. He's uh, going to be one of those guys that's in consideration as well. Then you got the others, you know, Damian Ball with, uh, you know, so many other guys that, that are coming in with DJ Jeffries, who was a five-star, then was made a four-star coming into the season. Uh, but a guy that a lot of people consider to be underrated in a lot of aspects because he went to Memphis. So you got all that going on. It's quite a mix of guys. It's not just local. You got the local and national mix with Lester Quiones from New York City. You got Boogie Ellis from San Diego, California. You got Precious, who's from the New York area by way of overseas as well. Uh, then you got the local appeal with the Damian Balls of the world from Tennessee Prep, uh, a preparatory school that's in the, the city of Memphis that most people don't give enough credit to uh, for producing really good college players. You talk about, like I said, DJ Jeffries from Olive Branch, so not directly Memphis, um, but, you know, related to, to a family that's in Memphis uh, where a lot of basketball talent comes from. So all that going on, man, and it just leads to a lot of excitement for the Tigers basketball team. Uh, so what's going on? I see Frankie coming in the building. I see Greg. I see GKP and some more of y'all coming in. Uh, good, well, I say good morning. Good afternoon uh, to y'all on this day, on this Wednesday. Um, so definitely, you know, um, looking forward to chatting with y'all. We were talking about and still talking about the Tigers basketball team. Tipping off, uh, tipping off practice on yesterday. And, uh, so here's the thing. Now that we're right here, now that we got Memphis Madness coming up in, uh, you know, less than a week, you know what I'm saying? Where we can really get introduced to this team on the big stage of FedEx form. How are we feeling right now? We got to see a preview of them in the Bahamas. And that was without the two best players. Uh, with Pressures and James Wiseman. How do you feel in the heading into Penny Hardaway's second season as basketball head coach? What are the expectations? What should be reasonable expectations in your mind? Like I said, we're here, man. Uh, I got my picture, you know, to show the backdrop of Beale Street. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sitting right in the middle of it, man, and Beale Street. It's right there where FedEx Forum is, and that street's going to be full of people in blue and gray when the season gets tipped off. And, you know, uh, expectations are high. Penny's second season. How should we look at this for Penny? Should this be a thing? Okay, Final Four or bust? I've seen that. Should this be a wait-and-see process? Or should, you know, it's one of the things, I'm kind of of this vein, right? One thing I, I admire about Penny Hardaway, and there's a lot of things, but one, one thing that's specifically here is the fact that he's not running from the expectations. He's not running from the fact that people expect him to be excellent this year. He ain't running from it. He said that's what we embrace. That we, that's what we want as Tigers, uh, Tigers basketball program. That's what we need. That's what we expect. That's what we thrive on. So all that being said, what are your expectations heading into this coming season. You can give me a call. I think this is the first time I'm giving the number out. 901-213-6020. Once again, 901-213-6020. If you got thoughts and opinions and all that stuff, whatever you got, however you're feeling about this Tigers basketball season. And I'll say this. I'm going to give Penny what he wants. And this is what I mean. I'm going to expect the best <laughs> from this team. I expect uh, greatness. I expect dominance in a lot of fashions. I think the Tigers are going to dominate where they need to dominate. I think just like any other great team, they're going to run into some games that's going to maybe catch them off guard for a minute. But I think they're going to get their bearings. I think they're going to pull through. Um, because one of the things, uh, when you talk about this team in particular, I love the way, you know, it seems as though, and this is early on before you really get into battle, so to speak, for positions, before you get into battles for all that stuff. 
uh, playing time. None of that stuff has happened yet. But as of right now, this team seems really together. They really seem on the same page. They really seem like, hey, this is our team. This is our city. Even these guys that aren't even from here, you can tell they've embraced the culture. They've embraced what they're about to experience uh, being Memphis Tiger basketball players. And that comes with a lot. That comes with a lot, man. It comes with a lot of expectations. It comes with a lot of, uh, you know, weight, to be honest with you. Because the fans are not going to take it easy on you. <laughs> the fans are not going to say, hey, look, give them some time to get used to the surroundings. No. The fans are going to be like, hey, I want to win right now. And I want to see it immediately. Or else we're going to be ready to blame somebody. <laughs> so that's uh, what I know a lot of people from this area kind of have been concerned about ever since Penny took the job was the fact that Memphis, people feel that Memphis has a tendency to turn on its own uh, when it comes to the head coaching job. But right now it's all happy-go-lucky, and hopefully it stays that way uh, when going into it. So I was reading a little bit about the first practice, and one of the things I was reading in the commercial appeal was that there's a huge emphasis on defense. There's a huge emphasis on effort and things of that nature. So uh, there was a portion of the practice that was open to the media. And uh, according to this Commercial Appeal article, it was spent entirely on defense. This entire portion of the practice was spent entirely on defense for the most part. Uh, They worked on defensive rotations, taking charges, closing out on shooters, and blocking shots. Uh, they said Penny had the team managers um, had the basketball in their hands more than the players, uh, using the team managers as props for the players to run up to and to do defensive drills on. Here's a quote from Penny Hardaway. Everything is about toughness and defense. Hardaway told the team half court to close practice. We've been working on offense since June. This is our identity right now. And a lot of people feel like that's going to be their main best weapon is defense. So I love to hear that, man, because I think what what tends to happen with teams this talented, uh, you know, all of these guys were, you know, for lack of a better word, the man of their high school rosters, right? Even down to some of the guys on the bench, you know what I'm saying, with, with Tyler Harris's of the world and guys like that that are already here. Those guys are used to being – the go-to guy in whatever situation they've been in. So for Penny to say, hey, look, I know we can go out there and outscore everybody. We want to go one-on-one, do all this other stuff, and that's fine. But he's focusing on defense, and I think that's a huge thing to focus on when you got so many offensive-minded guys. You have to drill into their head early that defense matters. Now, according to Penny, they've been working on their offense since June. So up until this point, they've been mostly focused on the offensive end of the floor. So that's an interesting note to talk about. But now heading into the official practices, he's going to spend most of his time on defense, on effort, closing out, things of that nature. Um, So y'all let me know how do you feel about uh, some of the things that Penny's talking about, some of the things that he's saying, heading into all this stuff that's happening right now. So it's going to be... Interesting. 901-213-6020 is the number to call. Yes, you can call into this show. If it's your first time viewing or checking it out, Talk Back Live Sports, right here on the Talk Back Live Network. You're seeing me on Facebook, but y'all can also hear me live on the Spreaker app and live on Facebook. Um, and afterwards, the podcast will be up on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts, as well as the Spreaker app as well. So y'all check all that out if you haven't already. But man, I'm I'm looking forward to this season. Um, you, you look at it, one of the things, and I even said this, um, when you see the roster kind of developing right now, I re- I'm really curious what this starting lineup is going to look like. Now, a lot of people feel like we got a sneak peek at what this roster is going to be when uh, we saw the games in uh, the Bahamas uh, f- 
you know, a few weeks ago, several weeks ago, um, race, I think about a month ago, uh, going back, even though we didn't see Wiseman and Precious, but we saw a lot of Damian Ball in the starting lineup. Uh, I believe it was uh, Lester Kionez uh, in the starting lineup. Saw a lot of Lance Thomas uh, as well, who played very well. DJ Jeffries started uh, just about every game, if I'm not mistaken. So makes you wonder, what is uh, Penny's mindset heading into uh, this practice and the position battles? Uh, it seems like everything is basically going to be up for grabs. Uh, now, you have to imagine, all that being said, Wiseman is safe uh, as being the starting center. I don't think there's a question there. I don't think we have to worry about um, Isaiah Maurice stealing Wiseman's uh, center sp- uh, position as far as that goes. Um, but how is the rest of the roster going to shake out, especially the guard position? Got a lot of guards. Just think about these guards. Alex Lomax, Tyler Harris, here from last year. You bring in Boogie Ellis, five-star from, uh, like I said, from California. You bring in Lester Kionis, another guard, four-star to New York. You bring in another guard, Damian Ball, four-star out of Tennessee Prep in Memphis. There's a lot of guys. You're going to have to try to rotate them in and out. Do you go with experience? Do you go with youth? Do you go with a mixture of the two? What do you do there? And then... You look further down the uh, the roster, the rotation, you still have a guy uh, like Ryan Boyce, <laughs> who was uh, a recruit that was sought after, not to the level of a lot of these guys, um, not necessarily a guard. He's more of a wing player, but he's there. You have Jaden Hardaway, uh, who looks like he showed some improvement and built himself physically as well. Uh, where does he play in all this, or do we even worry about that at all? You know, of course, Penny's son. Uh, you look at the wing position, Lester Keonis, Lance Thomas, DJ Jeffries, just that right there, how is that rotation going to be managed? How do you want to start the game? How do you want to finish? It's good to have this amount of resources and weapons to go to. And I was, again, um, uh, Ryan Boyce, who I brought up earlier in the wing area, not just for the three position, but the four position as well. You know, because uh, some projections have Lester. Um, not Lester, but uh, Precious starting at the four or Lance Thomas starting at the four. What do you do? Uh, so, so many things to figure out and uh, I'm going to leave that up to Penny and company, but it's going to be very interesting to see how this all shakes out, how this all plays out because there's still a lot of layers to be figured out and who goes where. Now, that being said, you got to wonder, when the rubber meets the road, Will everybody still be happy at the end of the day? Now, that's not the number one priority for Penny, I'd not imagine. Of course, you want to keep everybody happy uh, to that point. But, you know, when it gets down to it, and how are we going to start feeling when uh, guys, you know, aren't going to be playing as much as they probably think they should? What's going to happen at that point? So, y'all let me know what you think. Got a lot of people on here watching, and I appreciate that. Uh, up and down the line here, so it's going to be very, very exciting. Now, we'll go to break in a few minutes uh, before Leon comes on, but uh, i got about 10 minutes or so. Here's what I want to talk about a little bit here. Uh, and once again, if you can still want to talk Tiger basketball, you can. You can call into the show 901-213-6020, or you can leave some comments. Whether you agree or disagree, this is an open forum Y'all hit me up, and we can make it do what it do. But right now, I'm I'm kind of transitioning a little bit into Tiger football. And here's why. The Tigers have a big, big game coming up tomorrow. And that game is against Navy. If y'all didn't know, the game is not Saturday. It's tomorrow. It's Thursday night against the Navy Midshipmen. Uh, the Naval Academy coming, uh, I believe, coming into the Liberty Bowl. Yeah, coming into the Liberty Bowl uh, to play the Tigers. Y'all know when it's Memphis and Navy, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the Memphis team is. I remember one year the Tigers crushed Navy. 
Um, and that was a little while ago, but it seems like since that happened, Navy has made it their duty to beat Memphis down uh, and at least make it as tough as possible. Last year's game could not have been more of a disgraceful, pathetic performance by the Tigers. It was at Navy. I'll never forget. Watching the game, uh, I believe it was CBS Sports Network, sitting there watching it, uh, and... You know, me and Bob, and you know, Bob, you know, founder of Talk Back Live, co host of Talk Back Live with Bob and Josh, watching the game in the morning. If y'all want to check that out, 8 to 10 a.m. every morning, Monday through Thursday, you can catch me on there as well. But, man, we were talking about you look at Brady White, and <laughs> you look at how the Tigers closed that game. Because the thing was, the Tigers played pretty well up until the end. Or to a certain point in the second half, uh, where Navy just decided, okay, we're not going to let Daryl Henderson pop off anymore. Because Henderson was literally the Tigers' almost Bo Jackson last year, where you, all you had to do was give him the ball, and he was going to make something crazy happen from the backfield. But you don't have that anymore. You got some good players, but you don't have that anymore. So... And this was last year, man. The, the Tigers um, stopped riding on Henderson. Uh, it seemed like Norvell wanted to give Brady White some confidence in himself. They ran more throws and more unnecessary plays for him. He couldn't run. He couldn't throw. He couldn't move. He couldn't hold on to the ball. And everybody told me last year on Twitter, at Talkback Live, in case you want to follow me there, on Twitter especially, well, this the rain. The rain was just pouring down. You can't expect a quarterback to hold on to the ball in the rain. Yes, I can. He's a quarterback of a Division I college football team. Yes, I expect him to hold on to the ball in the rain. Yes, I expect him to be competent in the rain. And the rain was Brady White's worst enemy last season, not just in that game, but especially that game. That was the highlight. Remember toward the end, I believe the Tigers went for it or something. It was a crucial late play in the game. Brady White gets pressure, uh, steps up in the pocket, uh, runs. He trips and falls. Uh, I believe a Navy defender got him around the ankles. Uh, face face first. <laughs> uh, the ball pops up in the air. Navy grabs it. Game over. Hopefully that doesn't happen this time around. Now, I don't think that's one of those things you can expect to happen all the time because that was kind of a a crazy way to end the game. But I stand by this. I said this last year, and I'm going to stick by it this year. I don't think Brady White is a good quarterback. I don't. I don't think he's improved that much heading into this season. But if I am wrong, Tiger Nation, if I am wrong, Memphis, if I am wrong, Nation, everybody that's listening and watching to this show, I will find out potentially this Thursday. I'll find out tomorrow. I'm not expecting much. I hope I'm wrong. I hope the Tigers find a way to open up the offense a little bit more. But as I've said before, Brady White limits this team in so many ways. I'm going to tell you something. I was talking with a friend of mine, and we were talking about DeMonte Coxey. Y'all know DeMonte Cox. You may remember him. He's a big-time wide receiver for the Tigers. Still on the team. I say remember him, but you, you may not know he's on the team anymore, but he's actually still on the team. Had a pretty good game. I think it was against uh, Ole Miss. Caught like six passes. Uh, mostly short, short games. But he, I really believe, is has the potential to be one of the best deep threats in the entire country. If you watch him, watch the way he gets separation. You know, his burst from the line of scrimmage, his his body type, the way he catches the football. He has the potential to be a great deep threat. But we won't see it. You know why? Because we don't have a quarterback that throws the ball deep. And Mike Novell has schemed his offense around Brady White's weaknesses. Now, technically, like I said, that's what you're supposed to do as a coach. If you see a guy that has a weakness, you don't want to constantly put him in those situations. But if you got a quarterback that can't throw, I don't know how you can scheme around that. (laughs) 
Because eventually, he's going to have to go back in that pocket and make something happen from the pocket with his arm. I don't know if it'll happen, man. Navy's good. Uh, We'll see what happens coming into this game. The biggest key for this game is not only the quarterback position. I don't even think that's the biggest key. As much and as important as it is, we already know what that's going to be. But besides that, the biggest key of the Navy game, I'll talk more about it tomorrow, but the biggest key of the game tomorrow is the defense. We all know the type of offense that Navy runs. And we know when Navy runs that offense, it's trouble. (laughs) The triple option. You know, and they run it with incredible efficiency. And if they have a quarterback that's got enough speed and enough uh, confidence in running that system, it's going to be trouble. Look at last year. That quarterback got it going. (laughs) He got it going in the second half when the Tigers uh, forgot how to play football on both sides. Especially his defense was really bad uh, for the Tiger football team. But once the Tigers um, got it going, uh, once the Navy got it going in the second half, the Tigers could literally do nothing on either side of the ball. And Patrick Taylor is going to be out for a while, folks. They keep pushing it back and pushing it back. They don't want to tell us how serious his injury is. It's not looking good, and I hate that for him because this was his year to shine in the backfield. And I love Kenneth Gainwell. Gainwell is big time. He's Tony Pollard 2.0. Maybe a little bit of a better runner. I'm not sure if I can say that yet. But I love Kenny Gainwell. He can catch out the backfield, make plays happen in the running game. But so far, he hasn't played any really good defenses besides the SEC defense of Ole Miss. Now, he is the feature back right now. Can he handle the load? He's going to have to carry it because it's not going to be Brady White. And despite the talent that they have at the receiving core, it's not going to be them either. Hopefully we get some big plays out of Joey Magnifico, who I think is the one guy that can really thrive in the short passing game. The tight end's are always going to thrive in the short passing game as long as he's able to get even them the ball in the right position. So we shall see. But the last point I'll make before I go to break, you want to talk about Brady White, you want to talk about all this stuff. Brady White against Southern University. Southern University, I'm emphasize that again, Southern University. A Southern University team that was without their two starting defensive backs. <laughs> You're already playing Southern, and then they're without their two best defensive backs. What did Brady White do? He threw a bad interception, and he only threw for 200 yards. About 207 yards total. Didn't impress whatsoever. So... We'll see going forward uh, what's going to happen when it comes to Tigers football. But I just had to get that out, man. I had to let y'all know what's real, what's what when it comes to Tiger football and uh, what's to come in the future. So, should be having that call here in a few minutes. But before that, we're going to go to break and uh, check out these great commercials. But when we come back, y'all stay tuned, man. Got my man Leon Taylor joining me to talk about the big rendezvous for Wren that went down this past weekend. Plus, may talk some prep hoops, man. Talk about what's going on heading into this season, what he's looking forward to, and Tiger basketball as well in the time we have remaining. So y'all keep it locked. Keep it tuned in. We're going to be back. Talk Back Live Sports right here on Talk Back Live Network on Spreaker and Facebook Live. Stay tuned.
Are you tired of going to the doctor with the same issue over and over again and never getting any relief? Are you tired of buying all types of vitamins and supplements, hoping but not knowing for sure that they will keep you healthy? Or are you getting enough of the right kind of nutrients that your specific body needs? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you need a nutritional blood analysis. With a nutritional blood analysis, we can take one drop of blood from a prick of your finger and analyze your body's nutritional needs, nutritional deficiencies, and nutritional imbalances. This analysis can provide an early warning of possible future health challenges so you can make the changes now to avoid the negative outcome. A nutritional blood analysis can be used to monitor a health challenge before and after adopting an approach to restore health and balance. It will also allow you the ability to determine the effectiveness of various approaches to restoring and balancing your health. So don't wait. Make your appointment. Stop guessing with your health. Know what works for sure. 901-602-7063. See Graphic Printing, located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, a complete print shop for all your printing needs. They do it all. Color copy, resumes, funeral programs, rubber stamps, full color business cards, wedding and graduation invitations, and more. 30 plus years of quality work and service. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, Tennessee, 901-345-9294. See graphics printing. CJ Used Appliances, located at 3530 Jackson Avenue here in Memphis, Tennessee. Call them at 901-487-7882. CJ Used Appliances have the best prices in town. Sales and service, heating and air. Also the best appliances you'll find anywhere in the Mid-South. Refrigerators, uh, microwaves, stoves, washers and dryers, deep freezers, dishwashers, whatever you need in used appliances. And folks, I'm telling you, they're the best used appliances anywhere you'll find. That's CJ Used Appliances, 3530 Jackson Avenue. All appliances come with warranty. You can call them at 901-487-7882. Again, 901-487-7882. CJ Used Appliances. Sports back in the building, ready to talk some more stuff, man. Got my man on the phone, ready to go, ready to get it going on this evening. He is from I Love Sports Game Day, as well as Talk Back Live Network contributor. Uh, when it comes to all things Tigers, man, he is my man, Mr. Basketball Leon Taylor. Leon, how are you doing on this fine Wednesday, brother? Blessed to be here, ready to talk about this great weekend we had this past weekend. Uh, man, ready for Tiger Nation to kick off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, cannot wait. So, man, talk about it. Um, it was a big weekend and a, a special weekend. Uh, in honoring one of Memphis's own, uh, that played at every level in the city of Memphis, contributed in the community, and that was uh, Lorenz and Ryan. Also. Uh, mainly for Lorenz and Wright, and also honored uh, some other local stars as well that even if they weren't necessarily from Memphis but had something to do with Memphis in any way, shape, or fashion, they came and got involved. Talk about uh, what it was all about and what happened. Man, it was all about Lorenz and Wright, 
and it was about bringing the city of Memphis together. Mm -hmm. I was a part of it where we had the Little Legends game that started it off. Mm -hmm. The Little Legends game was some of the top local middle school players, and then we capitalized it off with former Tigers against Memphis Legends. Memphis legends such as Tyreen Moore, better known as T. Head, that played at BTW. Oh, wow. He hit 83 points. He had Lester Hudson, oh, man. who's pretty much a real deal Memphis legend because, you know, he's done so many miraculous things across the world. And mm -hmm. we're talking about China. And then you got legendary Ashley Shields, who was actually the game MVP. Oh, wow. Okay. And also, we, we had former Tiger uh, Sean Williams in the building. So it was pretty good for a first year event. Definitely, definitely, man. I was amazed at the names uh, that I saw, you know, and I saw, uh, you know, from your IG feed, you know, which you can catch up in anything basketball on your feed on there, plus on Facebook as well, <laughs> uh, man. And um, I saw you got to talk to Amari Stoudemire. Uh, talk about that. How how cool was that and how was he uh, about the whole thing? Seemed like he was uh, pretty, you know, enjoyed what was going on as well. Yeah, he was because, some people don't know that Amari Stoudemire was almost a Memphis Tiger at one point in time in his career. Mm -hmm. And he was getting ready to sign with John Calipari. But that was at the time where high school seniors were able to go into the NBA draft. Yeah, exactly. So that, that actually, Memphis has been like a second home to him because his agent, Travis King, has been from Memphis. So it's, it's not a new city to him. This is, a, this is almost like his second home because – he also had a younger brother to play for the Tigers as well. Yeah, that's so, right. I forgot about that. Yeah, Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's very familiar with the city. So he didn't play on Sunday, but he was a, a game coach mm -hmm. because, you know, he's probably trying to hopefully get back in the NBA so he doesn't want to risk any injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I know he was in the in the big three, you know, doing good. Uh, he was in great shape, you know, still can play some basketball. Exactly. You know what I mean? Uh, right. And it, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say that's the mm -hmm. thing about the event. You couldn't really get too many pros because the the NBA league is about to start, I think, what, next week? Yeah. Or, oh, I'm sorry. Training camp is about to start. So, yeah, they're about to get ready to kick it off. Mm hmm Definitely. Grizz Media Day, Monday, crazy enough. And, uh, you know, that's the start of training camp, you know. So, it's going to be uh, interesting how that all plays out, man. But that, that's an awesome event. And do you think that's going to be um, a thing that happens yearly? It's going to be an annual thing? Yeah, I think they're going to try to make that a, uh, a yearly event because, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, former Tigers such as William Bedford, um, Marvin Alexander, Dexter Reed, Aaron uh, Smith, you know, you had those Tigers from the 70s and the 80s, and we really didn't get all of them in one building. Mm -hmm. And from – from the response from the other Tigers, I think they really want to do it bigger and better next year. So it's going to be something to look forward to the following year. Definitely, definitely, man. That's that's uh, really awesome to see. And I like the fact that, you know, you're combining the, combining the past, present, and future of Memphis basketball. Because y'all brought the, the youngins up in there, like you said, with the middle school games. And a lot of high school recruits were around, you know, uh, as well with the, with the Tigers local and – and uh, Memphis players, it was a really cool mix of guys. And hopefully next time you can get, like, a, a whole sellout for something like that because I think it deserves a lot of people uh, to see something like that. Even Zach Randolph was in the building uh, hanging out. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, no can't, you can't beat that, man. That, that's awesome, no doubt. But so and there's a, yeah, there was ahead. another pitch to this uh, weekend as well. They had the Penny Hardaway experience where they had people actually pay, uh, pay to – either play golf with Penny mm -hmm. or practice with the Tigers. So you got a chance to get close to the program. And that was all about getting boosters and sponsorship for, like I said, Lorenzo Wright. The proceeds went to Lorenzo's mother and his mm -hmm. children. So oh, wow. they raised $300,000 for this from this event this past weekend. Wow. That's major. That's awesome. That That's incredible, yes, man. Yes. And I think it's great to see the University of Memphis get involved to, you know, the uh, be at the field house and for Penny to be right in the middle of the whole thing. That's good to bring the whole community together, man. That's that's an awesome experience. Right. I think it's more so Penny Hardaway than anything. Because yeah. One thing he wants to do is bring the brotherhood of the Tigers back because when you bring recruits in, a lot of times families want 
want to see what what happens to their child when they leave a program, mm-hmm. not just while they're at a program. So to see guys who've been been away from the school twenty years, and you know, you got guys been away from the program thirty years, and to see them mm-hmm. come and still wear tiger blue and still have the passion for the program, it, it speaks volumes about the University of Memphis. Absolutely, man. But before we move on, I know um, you know we've had William Bedford on before, and. I remember this was a couple of years ago before uh, Penny, but um, Bedford was pretty open and talking about how he didn't like how, you know, it seemed like there wasn't a real embrace of the old guys um, from back in the day. It's almost like they didn't want them around anymore. Um, but it's it's good to see that. I even saw a p- picture of Penny and Bedford together. So that just shows that he's making that reach for the university and for everybody else that didn't do it. Uh, Penny's right, trying to right. bridge that gap, so that's 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 really good to see, man. But uh, looking forward a little bit, I know you cover a lot of prep ball, like you said, high school, middle school, everything really, girls, boys, kids, men, all of it, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you know, you, you're on top of it all. So talk about, uh, you know, what are you most looking forward to? You know, this upcoming. Uh, prep basketball season. And we're going to go more in depth with this on a, a future episode when we have a little more time, but kind of talk about what you're most looking forward to on the on the surface here. Well, I'm really looking forward to see what happens in a triple A district, you know, with Whitehaven, Houston High School, East High School, mm-hmm. and Arlington High School. I mean, you got schools in that district that are ready to make some noise. And one in particular is Houston High School. Yeah. Houston High School has never really been in conversation of basketball, but this year you got some talent. You got Mason Miller, you got Mike Wilson, who's a top fifty prospect, and you also got Tony Matlock's son, TJ Matlock, who is really improved on his body and now he's jumping out the building. Oh, wow. I mean, he's a solid point guard and they got they got one of the biggest teams in high school basketball because you got another kid by the name of Fabian who stands six seven. You got another kid by the name of Zender, Zender Yates, who's also six seven, six eight. Then once you throw in Mason, who's another six eight, six nine, man, they got a, a college lineup. Awesome, awesome, man. That's that's gonna, that's gonna be big time. And uh, like I said, I wish I had a little more time to dive into some more things. I should, I definitely had some more questions about that. But we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in the future. But right now. Uh, kind of what I was talking about uh, before you came home. Uh, Tiger basketball, the practice has tipped off. Um, man, you know, the most anticipated season ever. I think it's pretty safe to say. Uh, Tiger history with the combination of Penny and the number one recruiting class in the country heading in, man. Um, what you thinking? What do you think should be reasonable for us to expect? Or should we just throw reason out the window and just, just go, uh, you know, NCAA finals or bust? You know what I mean? I'm not drinking that Kool-Aid right now. I'm not drinking that Kool-Aid. <laughs> it's too sweet for me, man. It's too sweet. Hey, don't get me wrong. They have a great team, and I really like with the acquisition of getting uh, Isaiah Stoke. Yeah. Because to me, it was always about, okay, what happens when James Wiseman gets in foul trouble? Who takes up the slack from that mm-hmm. position at the center position? And when you got a kid by the name Isaiah Stokes, whose brother is Johnnell Stokes from former UT Vol and Memphian, I mean, you got a big man that's a veteran. So they got a person in every position and a backup for every position. So you're talking about a loaded team for Penny Hardaway's second year. And with the way he's got the schedule set up, Mm -hmm. they definitely should be in the NCAA tournament because it's not a real hard schedule, but it's a little bit challenging once you get into some of those tournaments that they'll be playing in because they got a chance to play Oregon, and uh, I'm not mistaken, someone else is going to be real good. I can't think off the top of my head, but they 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 have a a, a great schedule that's set up for them to make the tournament. And I'm going to say they're going to do two and out. I just think when you, know, you got freshmen, you're not going to always just go straight and win a championship. It's not it's not likely. I mean, we just saw it with Zion, R.J. Barrett, and and Cam Reddish. Mm-hmm. It's not that easy. So it it, it takes veterans. And it takes chemistry. But the thing about this team that's, that's appealing is the backcourt 
veterans in Alex Lomax and Tyler Harris. Mm -hmm. Those guys get lost in the sauce, but people forget that they were once, one point, one point of time, the big names in the freshman class, and now they're sophomores. So they've had a taste of college life, and now they can kind of prepare these young guys for what's coming their way. They haven't been to a tournament themselves, but they, they, they know the obstacles that are ahead for them, you know, because expectations are through the roof already. You know, like you said, you got people already saying NCAA title. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's crazy, man, and you know it's one of those things you you expect it though. And I like Penny's being realistic; he expected it, you know. And he's like, "Hey, look, if you're gonna get these recruits, you know, and go after them like this and try to be great, you gotta expect great expectations from your fan base." And that's what's happening right now. You don't want to knock them down per se, but at the same time, you want to be realistic and take it a game at a time. And I, I like the way Penny's approached it as of right now. Um, it's going to be interesting to see once, and this is, you know, not to be negative, but it's just a thing to talk about. When you get into situations of um, playing time and you get into situations of competition and competing for playing time, starters, minutes, who's going to start, who's not going to start, all that stuff, you never know how that's going to shake out, man, and how feelings are going to get. Um but to be honest with you, I like the way the team has melded it so far. Do you think that's even going to be a thing to worry about as time goes on? No, I think I think everything's going to be fine. One thing I was really questioning was egos because mm-hmm. you got a lot of guys that want to be pros. And the way how they bonded lately, I don't see that being a problem. I think they all have bought in. You see guys, all, I mean, not just certain groups, you see a whole team of Tigers going out to dinner together. Like, they really have tried to buy into the whole winning atmosphere. Mm-hmm. You know, Penny actually built something to where it's kind of scary right now. You know, I, I just said, you know, I don't see a, a NCAA title, <laughs> but I do see a team that's going to make the NCAA tournament, and they're going to be hungry. Because you're talking about guys who want to prove a, a point. You know, you got Boogie Ellis, who's from the West Coast, you don't just get a kid down here from the West Coast that just doesn't care about winning and just want to, you know, put that Memphis jersey on and, and represent to the fullest because he's trying to be a one and done and he's going to have to be a, you know, a, a, a basically a, a great point guard. Mm-hmm. And Damian Barr, I mean, he just opened eyes from the Bahamas trip, and so now his ceiling is so high. It's, it's, it's some people saying he might be a first round pick, so. You got a lot of weight on a lot of kids' shoulders in just their first year. And yeah. In my opinion, I think you got at least maybe three three NBA prospects. And I'm going to say Damian Barr, James Wiseman, and Precious. Mm-hmm. Those guys are legit NBA prospects. Boogie is, on the, on, on the other hand, I mean, he's right there, but he's kind of caught in between positions. Yeah. I so, agree. I mean – I think with this team, he's going to probably play shooting guard. And mm-hmm. that's not, I mean, that's his natural position. But when you talk about NBA, he's about 6'3", and he needs to learn the point guard. So it's going to be interesting to see how he plans out. Yeah, because I think it's a great point. Because I was really just kind of um, questioning about how's the guard rotation going to work out. Because, you know, uh, people, some people have Boogie playing the point. I really can't see him playing point at any in any situation unless, you know, just, you know, for versatility's sake or whatever the case is. But I mainly see guys like Damian Ball, you know, Tyler and Alo kind of sticking around that point guard position. You know what I'm saying? Um, and ha- having the rest being two guards. But we'll see what happens, man. It's it's going to be really interesting to see how the starting lineup shake out and everything else. But now, last thing I'll ask uh, before we get out of here. With James Wiseman coming in, do you feel like he's going to meet all the expectations that we're expecting of him. Seems like everything's healthy, and he's looking good physically. Looks bigger, uh, which is a good sign. I'm sure that's just going to continue to to grow. But uh, how are you feeling about him heading into this season? Do you think he's going to show out and show to be that number one pick in the draft? I think he's going to do all that and then some more. I think he's going to be a legit great center in his first year because like I said, you look at the schedule, he's going to dominate all of those games. Because mm-hmm. you look at the teams they're playing, they don't have the, – the, the opponents don't have anybody that's going to stop him. 
he's going to average a double double, and this is going to be a year that he's actually playing with guard that can get him the ball because this this past year it was kind of tough. You know, they were dealing with a, a, a guard that was trying to make the transition of playing a, a point guard. The guy was a combo guard. Now he's playing with a guy like Damian Ball, who's going to give him the ball. He's playing with his favorite point guard. At his low max, he's going to give him the ball. And I don't think you want to be on the team not giving James Wyden the ball because he's going to let you know to give me the boo boo ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right Right into it. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Uh, but man, right. it's it's gonna be interesting to see, man. I, I can't wait get this thing started. Memphis Madness right around the corner, and uh, ain't no telling what type of surprises they may have in store for that man. But that's my man, uh, Leon Taylor. Man, tell them how they can follow all your stuff, uh, your interviews, your exclusive news, all that stuff. Uh, how they can check all that out. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at the Leon Daddy. Leon King Taylor mm-hmm. on Instagram, and you can also find me on Facebook, Leon King Taylor. That's and it. you're going to get some of the, the best of college, high school, and middle school. Don't be it. disappointed. Absolutely, man. Definitely going to catch him on here as well. So we put it all up, talking, you know, like you said, all that middle school, high school, college. We're going to talk it all. Even uh, NBA, man. I mean, Leon can talk anything. I know he's a Lakers fan. You know, so I know he's hyped about that as well. Um, <laughs> man, this this basketball this year period on all levels is just going to be incredibly lit. Uh, so I, I just I can't wait for it all, brother. Very, very. I'm. I mean, I'm already excited just from football. Football has been great. I'm only. I'm only just you know anticipate basketball now because I mean with. <laughs> So much stuff going on in football. You don't know who's going to be the big dog this year. I mean, Lamar Jackson mm-hmm. he's looking like the Knicks coming to Michael Vick. Mm-hmm. You know, Patrick Mahomes, he's looking like a pro bowler. So, I mean, it's, it's exciting in sports all the way around. Definitely, definitely, man. And hopefully, you know, our Titans can get it together um, with, 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 with Mariota. I don't know whether to quit on him, man. It's, it's one of those things, but... That's something we'll have to talk about in the future. Uh, that's a whole show uh, in itself right there, man. But, Leon, man, I appreciate you coming on, brother, and uh, we're definitely going to do it again. Okay, appreciate you, dog. Thanks, man. All right. All right, it's Leon Taylor joining me, man, talking Tigers and all that stuff. Um, so, y'all stay tuned, man. The season's right around the corner. Memphis Madness, Tiger Basketball. Y'all stay tuned right here to Talk Back Live network for the latest on all that stuff but as for me that's gonna do it for me on today i definitely appreciate y'all for tuning in and for watching and listening wherever you are however you were doing it and i will be back tomorrow morning uh you can catch me and bob on Tom back live with bob and josh live 8 to 10 a.m where we talk about literally any and everything news sports weather traffic all that stuff. Uh, my time is the discussion mainly as well. Uh, and I know people were anticipating, if you listen this morning, uh, do you want the answer to our question of the day that we gave? We wanted the best burger in Memphis. Did we find it? We're going to find out tomorrow morning uh, with Bob and Josh, myself and, and Bob there. So anyway, that's going to do it for me, man. And uh, we will talk to you guys next time right here on Talk Back Live Network. Are you tired of going to the doctor with the same issue over and over again and never getting any relief? Are you tired of buying all types of vitamins and supplements, hoping but not knowing for sure that they will keep you healthy? Or are you getting enough of the right kind of nutrients that your specific body needs? If you answer yes to any of these questions, you need a nutritional blood analysis. With a nutritional blood analysis, we can take one drop of blood from a prick of your finger and analyze your body's nutritional needs, nutritional deficiencies, and nutritional imbalances. This analysis can provide an early warning of possible future health challenges so you can make the changes now to avoid the negative outcome. A nutritional nutritional blood blood analysis analysis can be used to monitor a health challenge before and after adopting an approach 
to, to restore health and balance. It will, it will also allow you the ability to determine the effectiveness of various approaches to restoring and balancing your health. So, so don't wait. Make, make your point. Stop, Stop guessing with your health. health. Know, know what, what works for sure. 901-602-7063. Big Graphic Graphic Printing, Printing, located at 890 East Range Road Road in Memphis, a complete complete print shop for all your printing needs. They They do it all. Color copy, resume, funeral program, rubber stamp, full color business cards, wedding and graduation invitations, and more. 30 plus years of quality work and service. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, Tennessee, 901-345-9294. Graphics this, this is Sergeant Chris Richardson, Richardson with the Tennessee, Tennessee Highway Patrol here to explain the Tennessee, Tennessee Hands-Free Law, law which, which is a new state law effective July 1st, 2019. In Public Chapter 412, it, it makes it illegal for a driver to hold a cell phone or a mobile device with any part of their body to write, send, or read any text-based communication to reach for a cell phone or a mobile device in a manner that requires the driver to no longer be in a seated driving position or properly restrained by a seatbelt to watch a video or a movie on a cell phone or a mobile device, and to record or broadcast video on a cell phone or a mobile device. So, can I still talk on my cell phone while driving? Yes. A driver is permitted to use an earpiece, headphone device, or a device worn on a wrist to conduct a voice-based communication. The driver may use one button on a cell phone or a mobile device to initiate or terminate voice communication, and voice-based communication may also be used to send a text message. Learn more at handsfreetn.com. 